Today I want to talk about why I never designed my caps wardrobe color palette. Now that doesn't mean that I don't know my favorite colors, of course I do because that's very important for a capsule wardrobe, but how I found them is so much different to what is out there and that's what I want to share, why those methods didn't work for me and I want to give you an alternative approach that you can use today to really figure out your capsule wardrobe color palette and this is how I figured out not only one color palette but four one for each season. Five or even six years ago now, when I was building my first capsule wardrobe, I realized the importance of knowing your color palette. Your closet is gonna be so much more cohesive, shopping is gonna be so much easier, and also you can have a really small curated minimalist wardrobe. But what I don't agree with are all of the different methods out there. From personal experience, I tried the two most popular ones and I didn't get any results. In case you're wondering what they are, the first one is I tried copying other people capsule wardrobes. Now a lot of people share their palettes or they even create templates of different colors and different combinations and it's really kind because it's kind of supposed to speed up the process and give you a little bit of a shortcut but I personally never found success with this because how likely it is that someone is gonna have the same preferences in colors, the same base colors, the same accent colors for the same seasons, it's gonna be very very unlikely. So that's the first thing that I don't recommend anyone to even bother. <laughs> and then the second thing that I tried is sitting down with a piece of paper. And this is something that most people recommend, the most common approach, sitting down with an empty piece of paper and then designing your color palette from scratch. This is again something that I really wanted to work. I did it many different times, but at the end of the day, I came to realize that when you sit down and you want to make something nice on paper, it doesn't necessarily mean it's going to be the perfect color palette for you because you're almost going from fantasy or what looks good in theory, but then it's not really practical in real life. So these are the most popular approaches. I tried them both many different times. They didn't work for me. And now I'm going to share you what actually did. But before I do, there are two really important things to cover when it comes to colors. This is the foundation I believe everyone should have in order to have a really successful capsule wardrobe. The first thing you've probably heard about before because it's so, so important, and I'm just gonna keep it brief today, so don't worry, but I'm talking about undertones. In a nutshell, every skin tone and also every color, every item in your wardrobe, everything has a different undertone. And the reason we have to understand this is because the colors with a similar undertone to our skin are gonna look best on us. So for example, if you have a little bit of a cooler skin tone, that means you have a little bit more blue hue in your skin and you appear a little bit more pinky and red. So in that situation, if you have something like a neutral color red, it's not gonna look the best, but if we add a little bit of blue to it, then it's gonna look a little bit cooler and it's gonna match your skin so much better or if we take a neutral color like white and we add again a little bit of blue in it it's gonna be a crisp snow white color that is gonna look so much better on cool skin tone but then if we go all the way to the other side and we have warm skin tone that means there is a little bit more yellow in it and you just appear a little bit more golden and in that situation again if we have a neutral color like red we have to add a little bit of yellow to it and it's gonna be a little bit warmer and it's gonna suit us so much better or if we have a neutral white, again, we add the yellow and immediately you can see it has a lot more warmth. And then lastly, we can also be somewhere in the middle, neutral or even neutral, leaning slightly cooler or slightly warmer, but you know, somewhere in the middle, then again, colors that they don't go really, really cool or really, really warm, they're gonna look best of you. It's also worth mentioning that when it comes to olive skin tone, which is something that I have, it doesn't automatically mean that you're warm. This is a huge misconception that if you're olive, you're automatically warm but that's not true you can be very cool very warm slightly cool slightly warm or somewhere in the middle and even if you're not sure what your undertone is don't worry because with the steps that I'm sharing in this video you can figure it out and then the second thing we have to cover is contrast which is very straightforward you just have a picture of yourself and you take the saturation all the way down or you make it black and white and then you can see what kind of contrast you have in your skin versus your hair versus your eyes and that can help you realize which shades of colors will look best on you. So for example, if I do it with myself, you can see there is a huge contrast between a really white skin and then I have really dark hair and you can see there is a huge, huge contrast. And that means if we take a grayscale, the colors at the beginning
beginning and at the end will look best on me because they're gonna be high contrast. But if I take my sister for example, her hair is a little bit lighter and her skin is a little bit deeper, she spends a lot more time outside. <laughs> so you can see the difference right away and if we take the grayscale, you can imagine the colors in the middle are gonna suit her a little bit more than the colors at the end. And lastly, we have someone with a low contrast, which means there is not a huge difference between the hair and the skin and the eyes. And a person like this would look amazing in colors that are a little bit less saturated, so at the beginning of the scale. And when we're combining an outfit, we also wanna keep it low contrast, so there is not a huge difference between one shade and the other. So this is just something I wanted to quickly cover, and I must emphasize that these are not rules you have to follow to a T, to limit yourself, to put yourself in a box. That's why I'm also not a fan of color theories or even kibi body ties, because I can find that you can put yourself in a box too quickly, but I still find that knowing these rules and knowing what's out there and knowing what the contrast and undertone is, it's very important so you can really understand colors and which look best on you. But now as promised, let me share how I personally found my capsule wardrobe color palette. What I did in a nutshell is I decluttered my closet over and over and over and over again, decluttering entire color groups out of my wardrobe until I was only left with colors that I love. And because I change my capsule wardrobe every three months, I quickly realized which colors I prefer for each season. And that's how I did it because I pretty much gave up on the first two methods that I mentioned. And then just by decluttering, I realized what my color palette is. But of course this took me ages and that's why I created a shortcut, a tangible exercise you can use today to figure this out. So step one is to first figure out how many capsule wardrobes do you want to have. The reason this is important is because you want to know how many color palettes you need to figure out. So if you want to have a three month capsule wardrobe, that means you need to figure out four color palettes. Or if you want to have a six month capsule wardrobe, then of course you need only two. So once you know that, then step two is to pick one of the seasons that you want to have in your capsule wardrobe. And then for that season only, you go through your entire wardrobe picking up only your favorite pieces for that season only. That's it. So if you pick, let's say, summer capsule wardrobe, then you go through your clothing items, outerwear, shoes, bags, accessories, everything that you have in your wardrobe, picking your absolute favorite pieces and putting them somewhere separately, maybe on the sofa or on the couch, or if you have an extra clothing rack, somewhere when you can see your favorite pieces separately. Now, if you have a lot of stuff, you can also give a limit to yourself to make this a little bit quicker and more enjoyable. So we can do a limit of, let's say, 40 items, but you want to split this so you have let's say 25 to 30 pieces out of your clothing items and then 10 to 15 pieces you have out of your accessories, shoes and bags. So by the end you really cover everything and you have a clear idea of what your favorites are. Now once you have all of your favorite pieces for that particular season in one place, then step three is to take out a piece of paper and now we're gonna write down the colors. Now that you've done the work and went through your wardrobe, now we're gonna put it on the paper. And what you're gonna do is you're gonna sort all of the colors that you see into two categories, base and accent colors. This is again gonna be very simple. Base colors are colors you see absolutely everywhere in pretty much every category. The bottoms, the tops, the dresses, the jackets, the outerwear, shoes, bags, accessories like belts, everywhere. And then accent colors are colors you maybe just see in specific categories. Maybe you just have colorful dresses or colorful bags or colorful scarves, but you don't have colors in your bottoms or in shoes in outerwear. So base colors are in every category, accent colors Colors are just in specific categories. And as you're doing this, it's also important to note all of the different patterns that you see. Again, you want to treat them as colors and sort them in either base or accent patterns. So if you see, let's say, florals just in your scarves and in your dresses, then this is a good indication that florals are your accent pattern. But maybe you see a pattern everywhere. Maybe you have stripes and you see them in outerwear, in your jackets, in your bottoms, in your tops, dresses, everywhere. Then this would be your base pattern. And if you want to be even more analytical, I'm going to give you an extra step that you can do. This is optional, but 
I personally did this for myself and I found it very useful. And that is to note which specific categories are your accent categories. Because very likely you're gonna have pieces that are gonna be your base colors, very neutral, and you don't want to have any color in there. But then you're gonna have your favorite categories where you love to see colorful pieces and you wanna note down if bags are where you love your colors or your scarves. For me, example, I love colorful bags, colorful scarves, dresses, and tops. This is where I inject color in my wardrobe, but then my bottoms, my shoes, and my outerwear, and even my belts, everything is base colors, everything is neutral. And the reason this is important is because when you're shopping for colorful pieces, you can immediately know, oh yeah, I love orange, but orange pants are not gonna make a lot of sense, but I can buy something like an orange top and it's gonna be so much better. Now, if this is helpful and useful to you so far, I would really appreciate a thumbs up. And also, I think it's time we do another emoji. <laughs> so for this video, I think it's appropriate we do a color palette. So if you've come this far in the video, leave an emoji of a color palette down below so I can know. Thank you. <laughs> okay, so now that you picked your favorite pieces for a particular season and you sorted them into base and accent colors and patterns, now we can go deeper and we can actually analyze the undertones and the contrast of these colors. And that's why I had to talk about contrast and undertones in the beginning, because it's so important for this step. And that's because not all colors are created equal. For example, I always knew that I like a red color, even before I understood undertones. So that means when I was in the store and I saw something red, I thought I'm gonna love it, so I bought it. But then I realized that I'm not wearing all of my red pieces. Some of them I just couldn't stop wearing and some of them I just hated them and I never ever touched them. But only when I understood what undertones are, I realized, yes, I love a red with a cooler tone and I hate red with a warmer undertone. And that's why this is important. You don't wanna have a capsule wardrobe color palette that is general like red and green and blue because that's not gonna tell you a lot. You wanna know, I love a red with a cooler undertone because that's what you feel your best in. And remember when I said you don't necessarily have to figure out your skin undertone just by you know all of the different tests? That's because I believe we all instinctively wear colors that match us best. So if you see a pattern, maybe you see most of the colors in your color palette have a cooler undertone, that is very likely that you have a cool undertone. Or if you see a warmer colors, then of course you have a warm undertone. But if that doesn't convince you and you still wanna go figure out what your skin tone is, then of course go down the rabbit hole of undertones on YouTube and the blog. There is so much information out there. But for me personally, I instinctively knew and I really believe that most people do as well. And I just remember as I'm talking about this, my mom, for example, she always thought that she's a warm olive, but instinctively she's wearing gray and cooler purples and cooler navies, really cool toned colors. And then when we did the analysis, surprise, surprise, she was cool. So even her, she's not really into figuring this out. She instinctively knew she loves cooler colors. And then you also wanna know down the contrast of the color or the saturation. So if you see, okay, you like really bright saturated colors, you wanna write that down because if you like, let's say bright cooler pink, that it's so much different than having a warm pastel pink. They're completely different colors for me, I look awful in warm pastel pink, but I can still pull off cooler pastel pink sometimes, but it's not a huge portion of my closet. That's why I'm so particular about noting down the undertones and the saturation or the contrast because you really wanna know what your favorite, favorite shades and colors and undertones are. And of course, I think I have to emphasize again, please don't think this is a prison that you always have to follow these rules or else. It's your life, it's your closet. If you feel great in all variety of undertones and shades, then you do you. If you feel great, then no problem. But for me, and I think for most people, we kind of have our preferences for the brightness and the saturation and the undertone. So that's why I think this is so important. And lastly, what you wanna do is repeat this for every single season that you wanna have in your wardrobe. So if you've done this for the summer one, then you also wanna repeat the entire process for the fall, for the spring, and also for the winter, because you're gonna see the colors are gonna be different. That's what happens for me. In winter, I have deep plum colors that I would never wear in summer. <laughs> and then in the summer, I have navy that I would never wear in winter. So there can be a little differences between your color palettes, and that's absolutely 
absolutely normal. As you get more tan, a little bit more fair in the winter, your contrast is also changing. So that's also the reason why your palette can change as well, or just preference when it's warm, you feel like wearing different colors than when it's colder. So that's why I'm so passionate about this approach. So I really hope you enjoyed it. And if you did, then also I know you're gonna love the video that I did on how to build a perfect capsule wardrobe from scratch. It's a fail-proof step-by-step guide similar to this one. So if you enjoyed it, you can watch this one next. Thank you for watching today and I'll see you next time.